Hello everybody, welcome to a new video where I will show you how to build a website, how to build a social network step by step. I'm Sergio Lema, software architect, and in the video of today, I will show you how to connect a database to a Spring Boot application, how to create entities objects, and how to create Spring repositories to fetch the data. You can find the project in GitHub with the link present in the video's description. But before starting, Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss a video. In the previous video, I've configured the authentication, but as I didn't have the database configured, I've used a hard-coded password. Now I will connect this application to a database where I will be able to store the user information and some content. The database I will use is Postgres, due to the simplicity to install everywhere. I've already started Postgres server with Docker and it's available on localhost at port 5432. Now to connect my Spring Boot application with the database, I only need a configuration file. Here, I've set the name of the database, the username, and the password. Initialization mode variable means that the database doesn't exist, so Spring Boot needs to create it. And the JPA, the Java Persistence APA, where I set the driver, I don't want verbos SQL to be printed, and I want the entities to be validated against the database before starting, otherwise don't start the application. Let's add the driver as a dependency to let Spring use it. That's all. The driver, the credentials, and the initialization mod. Nothing more. Easy, right? Let's continue with the entities. The entities are the objects which reflect the database, where each table of the database will be mapped. Let's start with the first entity, the user information. I will configure some fields I need in this table. How to map this entity to a table in the database? Let's add the JPA dependency to allow Spring to connect the entity with the table in the database.
And now configure the entity. This is to tell Spring it's an object to be mapped with a table. This one, I will explain it later. I said this name because user is a table already used by Postgres. The ID may be the more complex configuration. This will be automatically filled with entity listeners. That's all. Let's start the application to validate everything is right. It fails, of course, because I have an empty database. I have first to create the tables and the fields in the database.
this file will be executed due to the initialization mod, which is always. Every start of the Spring Boot application, this file will be executed. That's why I put the if not exist to avoid errors. Find database configured entity mapped. Now read the data. For this, I will use the Spring repositories. The repositories will programmatically build the SQL commands with methods names which are human readable. Let's see how they work. interface because the implementation is done by Spring. I don't have to care about the SQL language. Even if I change the database type, the language will be adapted by the Spring when specifying the driver. But I can always use custom queries if I need. Let's use this repository to insert users in the database when signing and read the user's information when displaying a profile or when authenticating.
okay let's try all of this let's try the side in the sign up read the profile and sign out Okay, I have the user entity and its repository ready. Let's now create the messages entity to have a one-to-many connection in the database, which would be very interesting. I will use lazy because I have many of the objects, many of the messages connected to what user. And I don't want to download all the users when downloading one message.
And now, the Rupert's story. I can even use the relation between tables in the method name. The budget object will automatically limit and sort mid results. I don't need to use explicit offset and order by in the queries. I have made the connection from the messages to users and now I need from the users to the messages. This means that any change on the users will update the messages. I have to specify which column from the messages will be used to map the ID of the user. Let's create the messages table now. Okay, I have the table in the database, I have the entity and the Drupal story. Let's use them in the community service. For now, I will return all the messages, but I will do it better later.
Let's test all of this. Good, really good, but I can go further. I can do it better. Let's add a last thing, the friends. This is a more complex relationship because a friend is another user. I don't have to join two tables, but the user table with itself. It's a many-to-many -many relationship. And for the many-to-many -many relationships, I need an intermediary table. Let's go first with this intermediary table. And now adapt the user's entity.
as I said, it's a more complex relationship and a more complex configuration. Why to use this? When adding friends and when displaying messages, I want that the messages displayed are from my friends. I don't want messages from unknown people. Let's start adding friends. And now update the get community message method. Let's try now the community messages endpoint. I get only my message, but if I add more friends who have messages, I will see their messages here. I will let this exercise for you. Download the project in, at the link in the video's description and try it. Recap. I've created the application YAML with some configuration to connect with the database. I've created the schema SQL with the SQL commands to set up the database. I've created the entity objects with the mapping information to the correct columns. I've created the relationships between the tables, one-to-many between the users and messages, and many-to-many -many for the friends. I've created the repositories with the queries. And I've used the repositories in the services with the sprint injection to get the information from the database. The best part of this is that most of the part of the configuration is made with annotation. I don't need to look to multiple files to see the definition of a field, to see the mapping of a field, etc. Sprint GPA produces all the old hibernate configuration. And for the next video, I will show you two helpful and easy to use libraries to reduce a lot of code. I hope you enjoyed and learned something today. If that's the case, use the like button. 
and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will meet a video. Bye.